Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video we are going to discuss about Azure Arc or very precisely what is Azure Arc. Before we start knowing details about Azure Arc, I'm going to spend around a couple of minutes in explaining what are the fundamentals behind this service and then we will talk about the use case of why you should use this service and lastly I will let you know the different naming convention of the service based on the resource type. Let's begin. Since we are discussing about Azure Arc, it is very important to know the basic construct of Azure, which is everything in Azure is derived from ARM, which is Azure Resource Manager. And there is a term that I'm going to use a lot, which is resources. So I just want to bring a clarity in terms of what do I mean when I say resources? It can be a physical machine in your on-prem environment. It can be a virtual machine in your on-prem environment. It can be VMs in multi-cloud environment. It can be on-prem or multi-cloud Kubernetes cluster. It can be SQL servers or it can be edge devices, precisely Azure Stack. Now let's begin by understanding what is Azure Arc from a sample definition and which is Azure Arc is a service or an offering in Microsoft Azure, which provides a centralized management of all the resources that exist in your on-prem environment and multi-cloud environment. But there is one more statement that I would like to add here to set up the context. And you can use this statement in terms of building your understanding for Azure Arc. And that is Azure Arc services are specifically designed to onboard non-Azure resources to Azure. Okay. Now this is something which may not be directly applied to Azure stack because that's a different case altogether. But to begin with, just have this idea in your mind that Azure Arc services are there to make sure that you onboard non-Azure resources to Azure. And then from there, you can use the services or the capabilities which Azure has to offer for its own native resources. Let's understand both of these statements by an example of how modern enterprise architectures are being defined. Let's talk about a typical enterprise which has an on-prem environment, AWS, GCP, Edge Services, and obviously Microsoft Azure because we are talking about Azure Arc. And the image in the center denotes the set of admins who are managing all these resources in different platforms. Now, practically speaking, if you talk about just a simple use case of inventory management, just one use case, these admins might be using five different consoles for each segment. Now, though in on-prem, uh, there are many different parts moving together, but Hypothetically, just assume to manage on-prem resources, these admins are using a single console. And then the same concept replicates to AWS, GCP, Azure Resources, or Services, and Microsoft Azure, which will be obviously portal.azure.com. Practically, these admins are actually using five different consoles. Now, what if I say that I can help you implement a service that can help you to manage all these resources from one single console. And the service which will help us to achieve this requirement is Azure Arc. And then all these resources can be managed from one single console, which is portal.azure.com. So basically, in a nutshell, I can use Azure Arc to onboard non-Azure resources to Azure and then manage all of them from one single console. It can be VMs in your on-prem environment or different cloud platforms. It can be Kubernetes clusters, it can be SQL servers and rest of the supported resources. Everything seems to be ideal till this particular point because we are only talking about a normal use case of inventory management. But now, do you really think that this can just be a use case to adopt a brand new service? The answer is obviously not. But then the question is, what's next? What should I do after onboarding all the resources from different platforms? 
it can't be just onboarding resources to Microsoft Azure or it can't be just inventory management. There has to be something beyond inventory management, right? And if you have this thought, then this thought will redirect you to think about why will you use Azure Arc? And I will explain this with one more effective scenario. With all the possibilities of having different kind of resources in different platforms, to make it exceptionally simple, just assume that you have a VM in your on-prem environment and in AWS and in GCP. Now, as per the product functionality, which Azure Arc has to offer, that means onboarding non-Azure resources to Azure, I can get all these machines onboarded to Azure. But here is a catch, the most important aspect of Azure Arc, and that is when you use Azure Arc to onboard non-Azure resources to Azure, these non-Azure resources will get onboarded as Azure resource. I know this statement is slightly complicated. I'm repeating it and hear me out very closely. When you use Azure Arc to onboard non-Azure resources to Azure, they will be onboarded as Azure resource, okay? And for this example, let's name these services or these servers that we have onboarded from on-prem AWS and GCP as Azure Arc servers, just for this example. Let me show you a comparison, why it is like this, and then things will be exceptionally relatable. Imagine that you have created a VM in Azure. And if I talk about the capabilities that can be applied to this VM, they are deployment of extension, which means I can deploy a log analytics agent to this VM directly from the console. Similarly, I can also onboard this machine to Microsoft Defender for Cloud, which is a different service, which was formerly known as Azure Defender and before that Azure Security Center. So think about it. Microsoft Defender for Cloud was an Azure service, that means it was something that can help you protect the VMs in the cloud, but with the help of Azure Arc, you can expand that capability which Azure has to offer to your on-prem resources as well, okay? And not only this, I can even scope my Azure policy to this native VM. Now, the first construct is already clear, right? We have covered this in the last deck which is the moment I use Azure Arc, I can manage all the resources from one single centralized console. Let me show you all this in action, only the first aspect. So here is my browser where I have signed into Azure portal and I have clicked on resources and then I have applied a filter of VM and server hyphen Azure Arc, which means the machines or the servers which don't exist in Azure they exist somewhere else, but I have used Azure Arc to get them onboarded. Now, as you can see, all these machines are getting listed over here, be it Azure VM or on-prem machine. I can actually go ahead and do a centralized inventory management from this particular console itself. Okay, the first aspect. The second aspect is, which is related to deployment of extensions. Now, what if I say that deployment of extensions that you were doing for your native Azure VMs, this capability can also be expanded to Azure Arc resources, right? Which means a typical configuration change because we know that when a machine or a server which is there in your on-prem environment getting onboarded to Azure Arc, it is getting onboarded as Azure resource. And now, you can use Azure portal to deploy extension to these Azure Arc machines, which is fairly nice, right? Similarly, the third and the fourth aspect of security and compliance can also be expanded to Azure Arc resources. Now, all this is happening because only one aspect and that is I'm, re I'm saying this again and again because this is the most important part and that is whenever you use Azure Arc to onboard any resource to Azure, it gets onboarded as Azure resource, which means this particular resource is going to typically have a resource ID, which you can use in the form of Azure 
resource graph queries, right? Think about it. I mean, you can relate n number of different concepts which typically exist for Azure resources, but that's the USP of this particular service, okay? Now, if I come back to my browser and click on one of the Azure Arc servers, you can see I'm getting this option of deployment of extension. Fairly detailed conversation I've already done that how exactly this part is going to work. Similarly, I'm also getting an, an option for security. That means I can get this machine onboarded to MDFC and I can also apply some Azure policy. So according to me, this is an entire story behind implementing Azure Arc. And it is to make sure that it's not only about a centralized inventory management, you know, uh, a very basic uh, requirement. It's not only about that. It's basically something wherein you are foreseeing that you may adopt different services of Azure that you want to expand to other platforms. So for example, assume hypothetically that I have procured MDFC, for example, to protect all the VMs in Azure, but now I just want the same side, same kind of security controls to my on-prem VMs and to AWS VMs or GCP. I mean, for this particular demo, we are just talking about uh, some of the capabilities which are related to VM, as I'm trying to explain, but every component has different services, right? And all the services can be expanded to different kind of resources, okay? Now, the last option, as I said before, is again, the policy one. So it means, likewise, I have deployed an extension. I have onboarded the machine to MDFC. Similarly, I can scope an entire Azure security benchmark or any other compliance standard to all the resources which may exist in GCP or AWS and get a centralized re report, right? Now, all these concepts that I have covered, it was, again, specifically focused to servers. But that being said, Azure Arc is available for different type of resources. So according to me, why you should use Azure Arc, the first aspect is, again, centralized management when it comes to configuration, security, and compliance. And then the combination of other services that can also be applied to Azure Arc resources. One of them can be Microsoft Sentinel. Okay. Now, I'm not listing all of the services. This video is to just give you an idea what is the purpose of this product. But as we'll move on with the playlist, I'm going to cover each and every resource type implementation and what are the services that you can implement. Now, there is one more aspect and which is very important, and that is there are certain aspects in Azure Arc itself, which are paid services. OK, so when it comes to Azure Arc, Different type of resources have different type of services which are paid and I will be covering them individually in a lot more detail altogether. Also, if you are using, let's say, hypothetically MDFC, then there is a charge for MDFC that you have to pay apart from using Azure Arc. OK, so Azure Arc is helping you to bring on the resources to Azure and then depending upon the different services that you are using for that particular resources that you have onboarded, you're going to pay for that. OK, so this is a common image that you will see when you will start reading about Azure Arc. And I have tried explaining it in a much simpler format. Now, when it comes to naming convention, Azure Arc for servers is termed as Azure Arc enabled servers. Similarly, for Kubernetes, it is Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. Then you have data services, VMware, vSphere, and then SQL Server on Azure Arc enabled server. Now. Since the first component is servers, that's why I have used this idea or this example in this particular video to make things slightly more clear how it is working for servers perspective. But don't worry, I'm going to cover each and every aspect in a lot more detail altogether. OK, so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video. We have discussed about the basic fundamental behind using Azure Arc and why you should use it. The answer is if you want to use the native services which Azure has to offer for different kind of resources, then you can bring the resources from other platforms to Azure and then manage them centrally. And then we have also discussed about the naming convention. Now, in the next video, we are going to start off with the first segment, which is Azure Arc enabled for servers. 
So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.